frame of inertia. Something to do with frame of inertia. Interesting. So let's actually just harken back to last year. We learned, right? We learned a Newton's loss last year. Uh, okay. So we'll just start with what we had last year. We'll add. It's just adding a little piece. It's actually. I know some of the words are slightly different in, in the text, but we can actually just take what we had last year and add a piece. So just tell me what we had last year. Uh, this could be wrong, but is it you right? should never introduce it with this could be wrong because <laughs> <laughs> by default it probably is. All right, here we go. Uh, objects in motion, same motion. Uh, You're not writing it before. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just really took this and it's not mine. Oh, thank you. I might be mine. Well, it's AP Chem. Yeah, that's mine. All right. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. All right, we have so far Nick Lowe, and that motion will stay in motion, which is kind of in the middle and also not right. We'll try again. Michael, Newton's first law. Let's start with an object at rest. That's usually where we start. We could start with either one, but let's start with an object at rest because that one's slightly easier. An object. At rest, Michael. We'll just put will remain at rest, but tens would be fine. We'll put an and, and we'll start with the an object in motion. <coughs> Bless you. Will remain. We had an object in motion will remain in motion, which sadly misses so many pieces. Jay. Um, an object in motion will remain at a constant velocity. Will remain at a constant velocity. I'll put a comma. So an object in motion will remain in motion misses two main pieces of saying it will remain at a constant velocity. Adler, what are those two pieces that misses? Well, constant speed and constant direction. Constant speed and constant direction. Just saying it will stay in motion means very little, right? It's going to maintain a constant speed and a constant direction, which we can summarize by saying a constant velocity. Okay? We have a tail end at the end here, Connie. What? Unless acted upon by a, we'll just start with that. Unless acted upon by a, Sicarelli? Net external force. Net external force. Hello, sound familiar? <clears throat> yep. Good. <laughs> Constant velocity often forgotten, and net external, often forgotten. Now, this, as I said, is our Newton's first law from last year. We are going to add a small piece, and it comes at the beginning. When viewed from an inertial reference frame, comma, an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object motion will remain at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a net external force. Okay, so then what is an inertial reference frame? An inertial reference frame. Anna? Um, like a point is actually a review. We went through this in chapter four. I showed a little video that I did not create of a merry-go-round to talk about an inertial reference frame and a non-inertial reference frame. Um, would it refer to the like, um, the object's relative motion? Uh, sort of, but it has to do with the, the frame of reference itself. Karen? 
It does not mean a stationary reference frame. But and that is an option. But a stationary reference frame would be an inertial reference frame. Sure. It's when the acceleration is zero. It's when the acceleration is equal to zero. So it could be at rest, at stationary, but it could also be moving at a constant velocity, which brings us also to a non-inertial reference frame. where the acceleration does not equal zero. And as you recall, I showed you a brief video of a, bless you. <laughs> I showed you a brief video of a ball being rolled on a merry-go-round in a non-inertial reference frame where the merry-go-round was spinning. And that ball did not remain at a constant velocity, right? It instead moved in an arc. So, this only true, this first law is only true from an inertial reference frame, where the reference frame is not accelerated. Okay, we need to define some more things. Do this one. What is mass? All right. Uh, the amount of space an object takes up would be volume. That is not mass. Benedict? Uh, the amount of inertia an object possesses. It is the measure of inertia. So the amount of inertia, yes. So mass is a measure of the inertia of an object. Well, we've had this term several times now on the board. So let's make sure we understand what inertia is, Rebecca. Until that last word, we were, it's a tendency of an object to show me. Mm, not quite. Um, and uh, resist the change in acceleration. Uh, closer. Low. Mm. To resist an acceleration. To resist an acceleration or a change in velocity. So a change in state of motion. So the tendency of an object to resist a, uh, we'll do an acceleration, that's fine. Or you could also say to resist a change in state of motion. So you can see why Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. because it has to do with the tendency of an object to resist an acceleration. <coughs> Newton's second law. Newton's second law, please, Bob. The net force, which is a vector, is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is also. Great. Newton's second law is much easier to remember. The net force, the sum of all forces, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, where force and acceleration are both vectors, and mass then is a scalar. What are the dimensions here? Sum. Like the force Everything. Force is in Newtons. And a Newton is. You don't have to remember, it's all written right there. What did I mean by that? You don't have to rem remember, it's written right there. Flanagan. Um, the mass times acceleration is kilogram per second. Right, that's what a Newton is. Net force equals mass times acceleration. So net force, 
force by definition is in newtons, and it's mass times acceleration, so mass in kilograms acceleration in meters per second squared. The term weight does not equal mass. Weight and mass are two different things. Please identify one specific difference between weight and mass. These. Um, weight is like a force. Weight is a force. And mass is not a force. True. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, weight is like the force of gravity on an object. Well, it's, it's synonymous that we could say the force of gravity, they are the same thing. Which gets to the fact that weight is a force and mass is not. True. Other differences between weight and mass. Uh, Weight's a vector and mass is Weight has direction. It, has, it is a vector, whereas mass is a scalar. Other differences? Uh, mass is the same no matter where you measure it. Weight isn't. True. What do we call this? Um, uh, weight is proportional to gravity while mass is the height. True. I agree with that. I'm looking for a specific oh. term which, which refers to you. are absolutely oh. correct, but we'll get to the proportional to gravity just, or acceleration to gravity in just a minute. Jay? Uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation is something entirely different. We'll get to that in a little bit. Carol? Well, actually, mass does change, right? But it doesn't depend on location, it depends on other things. Mass is, do you know the terms? Are you going to use them? I may. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to go with that. Hedler. Um, weight is dependent on gravity. True. And mass is not. Now use the terms, that's fine. I will use them. <laughs> mass is what is called an intrinsic property. Yeah. Really? <laughs> 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 weight is called an extrinsic property. Weight is dependent on external variables, whereas uh, mass is only dependent on the, the object itself. It does not depend on anything else. Weight, synonymous for the force of gravity, they mean the same thing. What is the equation, David, for weight? Remember, oh, Kevin, you're David? Yeah. Just check. Um, weight equals... Mass pi by... G. It's been a long time, hasn't it? It was a good summer, wasn't it, David? <laughs> Benedict. Mass times the acceleration to gravity. Now, you will see me write this as the force of gravity. You will also see me write this as a capital W, because the force of gravity and the weight are synonymous. They mean the same thing. You will see it sometimes on the AP test as F sub G for force of gravity. You will sometimes see it as a giant W for weight. I will write it both ways so that you get used to seeing it both ways. This is one of the fun things about physics. Sometimes we have different symbols that mean the same thing, and we have the same symbol, which means different things, and I try to get you used to those various things. So the force of gravity equals the weight, which is equal to mass, times the acceleration due to gravity. I do want to point out that the force of gravity is a vector, the weight is a vector, which is the same thing, and the acceleration due to gravity is also a vector. What is the direction of the force of gravity? Go with me. Uh, positive. Okay, that, that, that depends oh, on down. how it is down. More specifically, it's toward the center of the planet, which as far as I know is down. But we do need to realize it's toward the center of the planet. Eventually, we'll be talking about it in that case instead of down. But we'll do down for now. The force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, which is down. The acceleration of gravity here on planet Earth is equal to and. Positive or negative? Uh, positive. Are you positive? <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Please remember G, little g, the acceleration of your gravity here on planet Earth is a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. G, by definition, is always a positive number. 